Hi and welcome to another Java tutorial. So in this tutorial, we're going to look at a Java application and how to access to SQLite database. So SQLite database is a local relational database that allow the application to perform SQL statement. So the following application is a simple food entry application which allow user to enter data such as food name, price and description into a database table. So for example, let me add an entry here. Chicken burger, price four ringgit fifty cent, or let's say five ringgit. Description: single chicken patty. So if I add this, it will automatically add to this table, and the data, both of these data, basically store into a database which is SQLite database so the database basically available in the application directory uh, as a food.db here is basically the SQLite database so the database only available in the local application directory uh, and it can be used to store data. So let me get through the database first. Let me get through the application first. So this is basically uh, the same application as in the previous example that I've already talked about. So you can see the link uh, in the description. Um, so it is basically the same application. You can see the uh, all the UI elements, text field, text area, button, table, frame, uh, levels, and also for the main interface here, uh, which basically uh, methods to create the user interface. So I'm not going to go, to go through the, the interface um, development, which you can refer in my previous video so what we have here what we're going to look here basically how to create the database so the database basically will require a library which is available through the library folder okay, so this is basically SQLite JDBC the latest version library which you need to import into the project directory so the library can be downloaded provided the link in the description so the library can be can be downloaded from from the link uh, and you need to import or you need to provide a reference to the library to the application so add the library to the application class class path from the java project down here click on that and then uh, add the reference library so in this case we want to add um, SQLite JDBC version 3.39.2.0 which is now available to the project. So once you add it to the application class path, now you can you can work, you can use the library. So to use the library, I have defined um, connection 
object, data set, result set, and also import the SQL into the project. So the first thing that you need to do is to connect to the library. So we use the string connector here, uh, JDBC, SQLite, and with the database name, which is the file name here, FoodDB. Uh, and for the connector object, uh, set the driver manager and get connection to the URL. So this basically provide us with the connection to the database. So once we connect to the database, uh, this part here, this is just to implement uh, the interface, the user interface, uh, by creating an object. So once we have the uh, with the we have the interface ready, uh, we need to check if the table in the database exists or not. So this basically handled through the check table methods down here. So this check table method basically allow us to create table in the database if the table is not yet available or it's not yet ready. So the SQL statement here, create table if not exist. This is the table names, table foods uh, with uh, ID as primary key uh, set to primary key and auto increment which the ID will automatically increment uh, whenever there's a new entry. Uh, field name, food name, tax data type. Food price is a real data type, which is in double, which allow you to enter double type data. Food description is a tax data. So this statement here allow for the SQL to create the table if the table is not yet exist. Uh, to execute the STL, we can provide a statement object and then execute the statement with the SQL. So once the SQL statement executed, it will automatically create the table, if not exist, into the food DB database. So that basically implemented through check table. So that's why I put it here so that it will always check if the table is not exist. So to be able to look or to be able to see the table uh, in this database food.db, so what we need to do, we will require to have what we call as an application called uh, DB browser you can download the application for free and then you can you can actually physically see the that uh, the, the database so all we have to do is just access the file which is um, available in the project directory so just um, drag drop the food DB file into the application. So now you can see that table foods with all its field, ID, food name, food price, and food description. So which means that we have the database, we have all the fields required for the application to work. All right, so once we have or we check for the tables, or in this case, just one table. Uh, if you have multiple tables, you might want to create those tables first. Uh, and then we want to load the data into the database. So the load method here basically allow us to load data into from the database. So this is basically just very similar to the MySQL uh, example from the previous video. So you can check how and uh, what it does. So the load data basically execute an SQL statement to select all data from the table food and then um, tabulate um, 
the data it's found from the statement uh, into the record set and then into the table. Okay, so this is into the record set and then this is into the, uh, the, the UI table, so which is this table here, the table down here. All right, so um, that every time we load the application, so let me stop the application first, rerun the application, it will always load the data into this table down here. So that what it does, load data, which is load the data from database, and then put it into record set, and then populate into table. So once we load the data, so the rest of the operation basically the same. So if you want to, for example, we want to insert data into database, uh, that basically handled by this button, uh, add food listener here. So the add food listener basically um, take the data from our form here. Let's say if I want to add another data, um, food name, um, let's say uh, laksa, my favorite food, um, five, re let's say like three ringgit, 50 cent, and description laksa, pair up with uh, with uh, egg All right so add that into data insert and that basically implemented by the add food listener object here so the add food listener basically execute um, the action perform override method and get all the data from the text fields uh, the input text field and then uh, check the data first if the data is empty or not and then display a message dialog if the data is empty uh, and if the data is not empty and then um, uh, we ask user are you sure insert this food data by using the option pane and then check if user press ok or not and finally execute the statement uh, by creating, uh, by executing the insert uh, SQL statement uh, into the database. So once we insert into database, we just call again load method to refresh our data so that we get the new data to be into our table. All right, so that's what it does here. Uh, execute the statement and then load or reload the data by calling the load data method. All right, so once we have that, um, the rest of the operation, um, the let's say delete operation, update operation, and also search operation. So let's say, let me search for food name, um, only laksa. So we should be able to get only laksa display here. All right. So that basically all the same. You can see through the listener implemented for each button uh, for delete operation, which is implemented by this delete food listener, update food uh, listener, and also search food listener. So all basically available down here. Uh, food listener delete food listener object search food listener object and there, there you go all right so this is all basically the same with um, the uh, mysql example uh, but this time we use the sql light uh, to 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 store the data into the database which is available locally so why do we need to do that? If the application um, requirement, there's no need to go online, there's no need to access online database, uh, but, and you, you require to store the data locally in the application directory, uh, and then SQLite basically uh, the best options to do that. Uh, however, do understand that 
if you delete the database, all the data in the database itself will be will be removed, will be deleted, uh, and there's no way for the application to retrieve the data because it basically only available in the application directory. So that's the the the, the problems with uh, SQL line because the data is only available to that particular machine to that particular um, computer compared to the MySQL database which allow for the application to store data remotely and can be accessed anywhere as long as there's an internet connection and the configuration um, to the uh, to the database is is is, is properly performed all right so you can check the codes uh, available uh, from the from my github link also available in the description uh, and um, have fun with it <laughs>